What's up, buttercups? We got us this bad boy here. Bad because it doesn't work. Oster toaster oven. At least 15 years old. Look online, you find that most of them have died in 2010 or around their barts. See if we can find out what's going on inside of it. Or at least take it apart. Oh no, my mood lighting just shut off. That's okay. These are the small screws. Good to remember. Or if I ever put it back together. Can we make it work? I don't know. I guess I should talk about what's wrong with it. Well, you'll be there toasting a piece of bread or broiling something, and then it'll just shut off and say something like error six or error 13. I honestly don't remember what it was. Some sort of error and a number. It doesn't really matter because the internet's got no answers. At least not the internet I found. And you know we all got different internets, right? I really don't like these generic adapter screwdrivers. I don't even know what they're called. Quite often you'll have a recessed screw that you want to get into and the screwdriver doesn't even get in there even in the case where sometimes you have the long screwdriver it's still oftentimes not not deep enough to get all the way down there I really don't like these I don't know why I still have them I guess easier to have one handle than two or even a three dozen handles for every type of driver I like these much better. Even these dollar store screwdrivers oftentimes are better than this crap. Well, that dollar store screwdriver really does suck. But that's okay. It seems to be getting the job done. But at least she fits in the hole. So while we're here, we'll mention that this is the Oster Toaster Oven Model 6248. Made in China. No wonder it broke. I know it's old. But uh, it sat, sat in storage for maybe 10 years. So it actually didn't have much of a time of serviceable life. But man, it sure heated up some good toast, some pizza slices, while it was alive. Ooh, washers. Weird. Oh, here's some screws there. I meant to do that. These ones are more like metal screws, maybe even self-tapping. Where the others have all been, I think, machine screws. I don't know, a whole lot to that. Well, there's really nothing over there except a spring. For uh, keeping the door closed, it looks like. We've got these elements. I don't even think these are replaceable. So if anything, we'll probably have some issues on the control panel on the front side. So let's see if we can get to that. Oh, crispy toasty bits coming out. <laughs> oh, there's a screw way down in there. Is this gonna come off? Shake, shake your method. It's really gross. Crumbs and grease. Whoever used this was a real, a real slob. I'm getting a feeling this is a one-way project, boys. 
starting to think she ain't going back together. Sometimes people ask me, you know, Lou, what is it? Ah, oh, shit. There's a lot of glue on there. I took those screws out for nothing. I'd like to say it was not for nothing, but it was for nothing. Well, I was going to say, some people tell me, hey, Lou, what's the convection in the convection? I was going to pull out this fan element and make a little comment about the convection in the convection element. Ooh, that's been nice. Rivets on here. I'm really making this my life hard. Definitely not coming back together, I can tell you that. But you know, really, to run a toaster oven, you don't really need all the steel cladding all on the outside. Take off the cowl. Oh, yeah. Now we're not getting somewhere. I think it would look really cool without all the extra metal. Wow, that's interesting. That's what I was talking about. That's what makes a convection convect. Oh yeah, that's all riveted on. I'm not getting that off. Not without a drill. And guess what, boys? I don't even own a drill. Not here, at least. I got half a dozen drills in another state. I guess the state you live in is a state of mind. are really looking up for us now, aren't they? Oh, look at that. I never took the plastic off. It's like an unboxing. Oh, yeah. 15 years or more later. Oh, that's smooth and clean. That's so nice. So the last screw is under this. What's holding that on, you ask? It's kind of complicated. Oh, it's screws. It's not complicated. Oh, there goes the door. Yep, look at that. It's just coming apart in all kinds of ways. Oh, well, there's my Lefty Lucy. Hey, don't tell my wife about Lefty Lucy if you know what I mean. It's all Lefty. Oh, Lefty Lucy. You feel so good. Taking all my screws out. Just imagine all those little Chinese hands working so fast to put this together. And here I am undoing the clever little works. I'm like a Neanderthal. Pretty little. Now, get it that screw right there. Should be wearing some black nitrile gloves and look real professional technician like here, you know? Guess I'll have to get that vacuum cleaner fixed so I can find those screws before my feet do. There we go. No need to bend anything, huh? Look how shiny, shiny that is. Oh, yeah. Look at these guts here. Can you see what those clever little Chinamans did? They print so cute. They printed little pictures of screws right there on the PCB to show where a screw goes. Even got one right there. Heavy ass plastic. Yuck. I was realizing here, generally before you probably start taking all this stuff apart, you want to check the simple stuff, like the fuse. However, the fuse must have been working because the, the unit did work. Just it would shut off after a minute or two. Fuse looks good. Probably what's going on is something's overheating. Like maybe this piece of shit. What is that, a transformer? I'm sure it's got a fancy name, like a step-down transformer or something. I'm guessing this here is the power control board. Some transistors, some resistors. That all looks good. Even these capacitors, I don't know. 
We don't look all swollen and fucky. C50. Maybe that's a capacitor. Some sort of a chip there on the heat sink. You know, that's probably a suspect part, just considering it's got a heat sink on it. And then there's these things. What is that, like a relay? Could be one of those bastards. I'm going to say it's probably whatever that... We got a transistor. Whatever that chip fuck is. I don't know if there's anything on the back side of that. Sometimes you can kind of see the burn marks. Uh, look, look. They put a little screw diagram there, but it's not a screw. It's a nut and a bolt. Someone fucked up. See here. Got another capacitor. Doesn't look any bulged and sad. I don't know, that one looks okay. A little beeper. This thing has got a not a lot of nice parts on it. We got a little like screen thing. Got some buttons. You know, it'd almost be fun to desolder this stuff and save them. Some little resistors on the back there. Some sort of an integrated circuit there. Can you see what that says? Seven two nine five five. Is that a timer circuit? I don't know. I don't know. It's real pretty though. What activates that? You got this real nice control panel that I just took the sticker off 15 years later. Pushes on some hard plastic nubbins there. The contact with these switches. Them switches is bitches. The question is, why doesn't it work? Integrated circuit there. What is that one? It's made by Hynix. GH0055 from, was that Korea? I guess that might make sense since it's Hynix. Remember when Hynix was in Eugene and they got all that environmental wetland stuff and it was a real bitch and they got all this tax free stuff to get them to come there and then five years later they was gone or something like that. That error goes beep, 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 beep. And this is like error six, man. I don't know. What's Amanda do? What does Amanda do? Back here, can you see that? It's real pretty. Look at all that solder. Looks like they had to reinforce that, that printed circuit board with solder. That's suspect. Super sus. High, high voltage danger. High voltage is my middle name. I haven't been electrocuted on this one yet, which is good news. Why am I wearing my glasses? Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Obviously that needed to be reinforced. So that could be that could be sus, as the kids these days say. I bet it's like this thing has gone bad. This machine. Why would it shut off after it works for a minute or two? Something's over here. Maybe that transistor. That bastard of a transistor. Or one of these diodes. Oh yeah, I unplugged that. Do diodes overheat? Look at all this good stuff. I mean, one of these things is bad, but everything else is good stuff. What's that say? Ong Chuan. Long Chuan. Some sort of switches, I suspect. Relay 1, Relay 2, Relay 3, Relay 4. Transistor 8, Transistor 6, Transistor 7. That transistor doesn't have a name. Diode 5, Diode 7, Diode 6, Diode 8. Why does that transistor have a name? Oh, is that transistor 5? It's named down there. Sunbeam. 6248. Power PCB. 2004. And right now it's 2001. And this stopped working two, three months ago. Like I said, it was in storage for maybe 10 years, maybe longer. Most people's of these quit working in 2010, 29. So this is, or is it 0617? I don't know. Should we fire it up and see what happens? Run it in danger mode? That does sound like a good idea. We're gonna plug this in and run it in danger mode. We probably don't want any of these bits touching those bits. So we'll just hang that right there and make sure that doesn't happen. And then this guy, well, we probably don't want to touch the danger bits on this either. Hope I don't get electrocuted. I don't want that. Well. She's fired up. Remember, this is top, that's bottom. And right now, according to this, she's in bake mode. C50, 
see that. Bake mode. So let's put it into uh, host mode. And to do that, I have to press the select button twice. She's set for three minutes. Start. Oh god, this is scary. Oh, I can smell it. I can smell it. Oh, that stinks. I smell heat. I smell electronics. Oh, I can smell it. I can smell it. Oh, that stinks. I smell heat. I smell electronics. Ooh, it's hot in here. Okay. Error. I heard something over here go click. It's real fucking hot. I don't know if I want to touch it. And this high voltage board scares me. I've been electrocuted so many times. I don't want to get electrocuted again, boys. Not today. I don't know what it was. I heard a tiny little tick. I mean, it could have just been switching the lights over. Something got too hot. I'm guessing it lost voltage somewhere. Maybe it's probably that piece of shit transformer. Or this heat synced transistor. Well, boys, if you got any clues, leave it. Leave something in the comments and let me know how I could have fixed it because I'm about to make it unfixable. It's also interesting here, if I cycle the power, she comes right back with the error, which makes me suspect there's an over temperature. One of the components is too hot. Probably that transistor right there. I guess one of the other things that could be bad with this is maybe there's something wrong with the elements. You know, I'm real hurt here, boys, that you all forgot to ask me what I'm drinking here today. It's some black coffee. Delicious instant black coffee. Because I'm a connoisseur. Ah, hear me slurp it for you there, boys? I almost choked on it. So I guess we'll continue here taking out these elements. Using some real tools now. Sockets. Oh boy, I feel like a real man. I'm working on a toaster oven with a socket wrench. This is fun. I'm a little perplexed here. The six millimeter socket is just ever so bit too big and the five is too small. So does that mean that these Chinese folks are using standard measurements? Interesting. So I think what's the most fascinating thing about this is that the little nuts that are on here holding a lot of these things together that I've already taken off using just the screwdriver on the nut on the bolt side for holding these down to the heating elements. And the nuts are a 732nd size. That's fascinating. I would have assumed metric. That's some nice adhesive, boys. Oh yeah, that's got that nice sticky gummy texture. Well, one thing I don't really have anymore is toast. Let's talk about what I do have. Well, Mr. Toaster Oven, it's been real. Just fold you up here for storage. Wow, it uses a lot less countertop space when it's like stored like this. I have to say, quality, like the hardness of this plastic, the heaviness, the heft of these plastic parts. Well, let's talk about what I do have. One, I have a really nice collection of screws, little like machine screws and sheet metal screws, some nuts, like a screw on wire retainer. Lots of these little nuts, real nice. Very excited about that. If I decide to leave this as one unit, which I'll talk about in just a moment, this doesn't count, but if I decide to scrap it all, I have a lot of nice components. I have these little momentary switches, some, uh, what are these, LED, or, uh, I don't remember, I'm losing my words. I've got these nice green LEDs here that told me how toasted my bread was. You know, I even got a little speaker here that I can take off, some nice, uh, cable, maybe some resistors, you know, yeah, a bunch of resistors, a bunch of, um, got these beautiful relays, this transformer, which might be fucked, I don't know, uh, so yeah, I could, I could salvage the parts off of this to, to, you know, build something incredible, 
But if I leave it as is, even if I don't fix it, from my understanding of the intelligence reports that are coming through the media, the Talabin will be invading America very soon. And some of us are armed in different ways. I happen to now have a bit of a torture device, something that might might even be useful in Guantanamo, where we can can heat the boys up a little bit, you know, and, and find out some secrets. And I, I've been here in the Talabin is kind of a progressive group now, and so maybe they have some women in their their ranks. Um, I was thinking if it's the man's, we could just literally just stick their balls in here and twist their balls all up, and you know they'll definitely give up their secrets then. And if it's a women, well. Their nipples might be good, but I was thinking that long hair they have. Even them Talabin boys, some of them have like that long hair and them beards. Stick it in there and it just pulls real hard. Definitely get them secrets out of them. So, other things we have, depending on how you look at it, I mean, I could have like an electrically charged supercharger here if I would fix it. Maybe a water pump. I mean, I could probably make a generator out of this. I mean, who knows? Pretty much, the possibilities are endless. Coincidences are funny, and maybe it's not a coincidence. While I was disassembling this, I thought, hmm, if I was ever a manufacturer, I'd be just a pain in people's ass, and I'd make everything uh, counterclockwise threads or whatever, just the opposite of what's normal. Here I am trying to take this impeller here off this fan, and it's not working. Guess what? Righty Lucy. What do you know? I'm glad I outsmarted it. Another cool thing that I got out of this was a thermocouple. How sweet is that? Lots of good stuff here. A little sticky and gross, but very cool. We got a nice spring. This is a good spring. It's got a little spring in it. Um, got this nice piece of film that we took off of here. And you know, sometimes you just like to have something to touch. And then as far as this, you know, this could just kind of go on the spaceship. You know, maybe Elon wants something for his, uh, his control panels, you know, kind of Star Trek-y. And if he doesn't, you know, I, I kind of think I now have like a filter for my camera. It's a really nice, it, it needs to be shined up a little bit, but it looks like maybe a neutral density filter or something. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. And, you know, maybe if I get one of the fancy cameras with two cameras, it's like a binocular filter. All right, boys, that's all I got. Like and subscribe, Buttercups.